Welcome back. For decades, Fredericksburg's history has focused on George Washington's boyhood home and on Civil War battles fought there. But an effort to provide more of a complete history to reveal a rich civil rights history led by African-American residents is taking a big step forward. Northern Virginia Bureau Chief Julie Carey takes a look at the newly dedicated Civil Rights History Trail. The picture strikes you. It's a picture that captures the pain, the isolation of a barrier breaking 12 year old boy, the first to desegregate Fredericksburg's Maury School. And nobody knew who, who the child was. How about that? Yep. That was until Chris Williams from the University of Mary Washington and Victoria Matthews from the city's tourism department joined forces in the summer of 2020. They started digging, bent on revealing the untold stories of local civil rights pioneers. In Fredericksburg, we were very good about telling George Washington's story and the Civil War stories, and those are also incredibly important. But we really didn't have an understanding of what happened in Fredericksburg during the Civil Rights Movement. They learned the child's name was Robert Christian, and for the the first time he agreed to share his experience, his reflections, and oral history. He recounted sharing that no one would sit at the lunch table with him, nobody would play with him at recess, um, the teacher forced him to sit at the back of the classroom. Christian's story, one of about two dozen now represented in the Fredericksburg Civil Rights Trail, dedicated today at this ceremony. Mr. Christian in attendance. Make me feel very humble. And I see there's a lot more work to be done. The trail is a three mile route that links the stories of trailblazing African American residents with local sites. It's about understanding what they went through so that we can do better in the future. At Shiloh Baptist Church, for instance, a stained glass window is dedicated to Dr. Urbane Bass. Barred from practicing at the local hospital, he went on to serve in World War II, where he was fatally wounded. There's Charles Dyson, the first black police officer who was not allowed to arrest white people. And the James Farmer Memorial, honoring the Mary Washington professor who was one of the first freedom writers. It's really been an honor of mine to interview these folks and to share their stories of tragedy and triumph uh, during the civil rights era. Now it's hoped more civil rights stories will emerge so the trail can grow longer, the city's history grow richer and more complete. Reporting for News 4, I'm Julie Carey.